graduation weekend on the Illinois State University campus as we welcome you inside Duffy Bass Field where the Redbirds get set to kick off their final homestand of the campaign in a pivotal three-game set against the UIC Flames. Hi, get everyone alongside. Assistant Director of Communications, Scott Beaton. I'm John Fitzgerald. Birds find themselves with six games left at the Valley Slate. A one-game lead on both Belmont and Bradley for the eighth and final playoff spot. And they're going to open a three-game set with UIC tonight. A ball club that's red hot, winners of four straight. And they are led by one of the best power hitters in the Missouri Valley Conference and third baseman, Charlie Zaccone. Yeah, Zaccone has been a, a big force for the, the Flames at the top of the lineup there. And the, the two-hole hitting 341, which ranks fourth in the MVC. To go with 48 RBIs, which is third in the MVC, and then the big number, 14 home runs. He has been outstanding to pace this UIC ball club that can really put runs on the board. And Illinois State, a resurgent ball club who's been red hot of late, and they have a transfer as well who's really keyed that resurgence, and that's center fielder Augie Rasmussen. Yeah, Rasmussen, first 22 games, was hitting just 230 and then really turned it on here. In the, the second half, 36 of his last 90 for a, a 400 average in the last 22 games. And when he gets on base, which has been quite often, he can make a count. A Valley best 22 stolen bases on the campaign for the transfer out of Iowa Western Community College. The Birds and the UIC Flames, the first of three this weekend in the final conference homestand. For Steve Holmes Ball Club, he's taking a look at the UIC Flames tonight, and they're going to go with Cole Kahn, the catcher in the leadoff spot. As a matter of fact, he is their top stolen base threat as well. Charlie Zaccone, the grad transfer, hits number two, team high 14 home runs. Transfer out of a, after a four-year career at the University of Wisconsin Stout to Division Three school up in the WIAC. And they will face Cameron Maybe, who's going to start for the second time on Friday night in the opening game. He's making his eighth start tonight. It's a record of 2-4, and four, a 5.26 earned run average, 51 and a third innings pitched on the year, 62 hits, 35 runs, 30 of which have been earned. He's walked 14, struck out 30, and opponents hitting 292 against the right-hander. And his first pitch of the night's going to be a called strike on the inside corner as he faces the switch inning catcher, Cole Kahn. Checks in at 223, three home runs and 20 RBIs. Here's the 0-1 for maybe. That one's taken away just outside as Kahn hits from the left-hand zone against the right-handed starter for Illinois State. Maybe last week got his first start of the year in a Friday night opener. Didn't fare horribly well, a loss to Evansville. Four innings pitched, nine hits, eight runs, all of which were earned. He walked one and he struck out three. But it wasn't necessarily indicative of his performance. His stuff was good, but a lot of credit belongs to that Purple Aces offense, who really, I thought, worked counts incredibly well early on and elevated his pitch count. Yeah, the return of, of Mark Schallenberger in the four hole for, for Evansville certainly played a role in that. Kahn lines a ball into center field. It's going to fall and drop in in front of Augie Rasmussen. So the leadoff man on base for UIC to begin our proceedings tonight. A single back up the box off the bat of Cole Kahn. And the big left-handed third baseman, Charlie Zaccone, will step in for UIC. Zaccone fourth in the Valley in both average and home runs. 341 clip, 14 home runs, and also a team high 48 runs batted in. That's good for third best in the Missouri Valley Conference. First team Division Three All-American last year, UW Stout. And he hits a breaking ball first pitch, waited back on it, but loops it foul. Deep into the right corner. And Cam maybe jumps ahead. No balls and a strike. Zaccone clubbed a school record 18 home runs, drove in 55 runs last year. And as his grad transfer year has made his presence known in his one and only year on the UIC campus, gets fisted, fouls the ball back, and maybe had an account, no balls and two strikes.
Conn takes a short lead at first. Here's Maybe's delivery fouled back again as he worked inside on Zaccone on 0-2. Redbirds will certainly be keeping an eye on Conn over that first base. As you mentioned, 14 steals for the catcher. Six best in the Valley. Late lead and a quick throw over by Maybe, but Conn's back in standing up. Just underway here on a Friday night. First of three of the final three home games for Steve Holmes Club. As they head down the stretch of the Valley race. Another throw over by Maybe and back again safely is Cole Kahn. Birds, as we said, open the weekend in eighth place in the Valley standings. The top eight teams go to the Valley Tournament. 0-2 and it hit Zaccone on the elbow pad. So very quickly on the 0-2 hit by pitch, UIC with runners at first and second and nobody out. UIC third in the Valley coming in. Now 52 hit by pitches on the year. They're also third in drawing walks. So Conn at first base, Zaccone at, I'm sorry, Conn at second, Zaccone at first, and now Wraith Peterson, the right fielder, first pitch swinging, lines a ball fouled on the left field line. Peterson, 282, three home runs, 33 runs driven in. Hit 330 a year ago with four bombs for UIC. He hits from the right-hand side, nobody out, first and second. A one one pitch from maybe off speed, left foul, and backing out of play over our heads here in the press box at Duffy Bass Field. Maybe able to get ahead in the count once again. Here, first two pitches in the zone. It was ahead of Zaccone, 0 2. Zaccone fouled off an 0 2 offering twice and then was hit in the elbow as he tried to come inside again. 0 2 elevated, and Peterson lets it go by for ball one. Birds will close out the regular season next weekend with three in Northwest Indiana as they take on Valparaiso. High set by Maybe, and he's going to step off. The step off will also reset the 22nd pitch count, pitch clock rather. Here's the 1 2 slider in the dirt, but able to get Peterson down on strikes. Tried to hold up his swing, unable to do so. Good tight slider out of the hand of Mike Cameron maybe for his first punch out of the night. As you take a look at the Redbird defense, left to right in the outfield, Pasilla Rasmussen and Sokolov on the infield. It's Lawrence Robinson, Nichols, and Kubo. Nick Strong gets a start behind the dish for Cameron maybe who with runners at first and second and nobody out struck out Wraith Peterson and now does battle with AJ Hankel the center fielder and once again maybe jumps ahead in the count she gets a fastball in the bottom of the zone Hankel 323 four home runs 24 RBIs he's third in the valley an on-base percentage of just about 450, and a spin turn by maybe thrown into center field. Rasmussen up with it, but both runners able to advance 90 feet. Khan moves into third base, and Zaccone trots into second. Looked like he had a chance at him for a good throw, but just, just too far for Nichols to be able to handle that one. Nichols went to cover the bag from his second base spots, and the throw went to the first base side of second base and caromed into the outfield. Now a slider taken outside. Two balls and a strike. Khan let it off with a single up the middle. Zaccone hit by a pitch. Maybe struck out Peterson, and dots a fastball in the outside corner to jump ahead. One ball and two strikes now. The cleanup man, A.J. Hankel. Hankel missed the vast majority of the year. As a matter of fact, just played one game last year. Pinch hit opportunity at UIC, then tore ligaments in his hand and missed the remainder of the year. Maybe just missed with that fastball to even the count of two balls and two strikes. 
Here's the 2-2 pitch. Slider just outside. Maybe wanted an awfully good pitch. But on play it umpire, Doug Thrasher calls it outside. The count goes full. Here's the full count offering taken downstairs for ball four. First walk issued by Cameron Maybe, and UIC is the bases loaded with one out. So Cole Conn at third base, Zaccone at second, and now A.J. Hankel makes his way down to first base as Carson Roberts, the left-handed hitting left fielder, digs in. Roberts at 308, three home runs. He's driven in 38. Junior college transfer from the College of DuPage in West Suburban Chicago. Takes a first pitch for a ball. 338, five home runs, 42 RBIs last year at DuPage. Juco All-Region selection. And the count even now at 1-1 one one as maybe pumps over a fastball in the inner half. Here's a 1-1 offering. Slider on the ground. Diving stop by Kubo up with it. Steps on the bag. And that saved extra bases. On the play, Khan able to come in from third base and score the game's first run. But Kubo with a great play behind the bag down the line at first base. Kept that from being a possible three-run scoring double. Yeah, nice play. Just uh, just barely fair inside that first baseline. Kubo able to, to snare it and get the three unassisted. First pitch to Brent Nowick, the first baseman, take it outside. Zaccone at third. Hankel now at second base, two men out. Top of the first inning, just underway. UIC, a 1-0 lead. Fastball just off the plate. And Nowick ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. Freshman All-American last year at UIC, 46 starts at 335. Nine home runs, drove in 42. He lifts the ball foul on a good 2-0 cut. Out of play down the right side. Play Noick straight away. Wind really not a factor tonight on a warm Friday evening in May. A little bit muggy. Fastball elevated upstairs. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, typically the wind will run from the right field foul pole to the left field foul pole here at Duffy Bass Field, but looks like we have very minimal wind coming in from right center right now. Here's the 3-1 slider. Good pitch by maybe, and that pushes the count to three balls and two strikes. Nowick one for four on a Wednesday night. And the Flames 7-3 win over Purdue at Granderson Stadium in Chicago. And that fastball taken outside for ball four. So the base is loaded once again. Second walk of the inning issued by Maybe. And with two outs, Ryan Nagelbach, the switch hitting second baseman will stand in. He'll hit from the left side against the right-handed throwing Cameron Maybe. They go back 232, five home runs, 16 runs driven in. Slightly open stance, breaking ball taken for a strike on the first pitch. Maybe already at 29 pitches here in the first half. Here's the 1 0 offering, lifted in the air to deep right field. Sokolov going back to the track, to the wall. He's going to look up, and it's a grand slam for Ryan Nagelbach. The second baseman clubs his sixth home run of the year. RBIs number 17, 18, 19, and 20. And just like that, the UIC Flames add four more and. They have a five spot here on the board in the top of the fifth inning. Just a hang curveball, caught too much of the plate. See you there, Just deep fly ball to right field. He turned on that, weighted back well. Got the barrel out and able to drive it over the right field fence. There at Duffy Bass Field. Chance for the Redbirds to, to get out of the inning with only one run allowed, but big blow there. 
That ball on the ground, pass to diving Luke Lawrence into left field. It'll make it for the designated hitter, Bobby Grimes. Third hit, given up by maybe here on the top of the first inning with two men out. So UIC striking five times here on the top of the first against right-handed starter Cameron Maybe. Sixth home run of the year given up by Maybe. And the second grand slam in as many weeks. As Chase Hug, the first baseman for Evansville, able to club a grand slam back in the second inning last Friday. So ninth man to come to the plate for UIC here on the top of the first inning. The right-handed inning shortstop, Zane Zielinski. First pitch swinging, fouled off. Zielinski, 242. No home runs on the year. He's driven in 18. Grimes was in motion there, but pitch fell out of play. Grimes a perfect five for five in stolen base attempts this year. High set by maybe. Oh one, take it upstairs. One ball and a one strike. Zelensky, a product of Lakeview High School on the north side of Chicago. Number of Chicago's public league, but last year, his second season at Northeast Community College in Norfolk, Nebraska, where he hit 368, six home runs, takes another fastball upstairs for ball two. Two balls and a strike to Zane Zelensky, the ninth man of the order for UIC, who's already put five runs on the board here in the top of the first inning. Here's the 2-1, fastball lifted into right field, a base hit. It's going to fall in front of Sokolov. Up. up throwing and going first to third on the play is Bobby Grimes. As Zelensky singles to right field, Grimes moves first to third. And UIC now with runners at the corners and two men out. That pitch inside part of the plate goes inside out to right field. And the, the Flames, Grimes able to go first to third. So Cole Kahn, the leadoff man, will hit for the second time this inning. As Redbird pitching coach R.D. Spees makes a mound visit to talk to Cameron Maybe, who finds himself in a 5-0 hole with two men out here on the top of the first inning. Up to 36 pitches. Hopefully can get out of the inning with just a few more, maybe, to, to save the Red River bullpen as it's only Friday and the teams play tomorrow and Sunday. So important to try to stay out of the bullpen as best as possible, especially in that first game of a three-game set. Yeah, the, the Birds were able to get four innings out of, out of maybe on Friday against Evansville and relatively similar similar start to the game. So Cole Kahn, who started this all off with a leadoff single. Comes to the plate now with runners at the corners. Two men out. First pitch by Maybe lifted in the air to right field. Sokolov over toward the line. He's going to glove it on the run. So Cod retired. He flies to right on the first pitch. And UIC finally done here at the top of the first inning. But not before the Flames get five runs on four hits. They left two men on. We played half an inning here in normal. Birds coming to bats. 5 nothing UIC. In a community where friendships form our foundations, Carl McLean County Orthopedics continues to be the region's most trusted orthopedic care provider. Now with an expanded healthcare network and the ability to accept most insurance, we continue to care for our own with excellence right here in our hometown. From prompt diagnosis and local surgical intervention to complete therapy and successful recovery, Carl McLean County Orthopedics can help you get back to the life you love. Visit CarlMcLeanCountyOrthopedics.com today. What is a legacy? It's the difference you make measured by the lives you change. 
It's imagining new possibilities for our future and unlocking the mysteries of our past. It's learning and teaching. It's how life shapes you and how you shape life. A legacy is the mark you leave on the world. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Visitors from the near west side of Chicago, the UIC Flames score five times at the top of the first inning. The Birds look to rebound here as they come to the plate for the first time on this Friday night. First of a three-game set here at Duffy Bass Field. And freshman shortstop, the birthday boy, Shy Robinson, will lead things off, followed by Augie Rasmussen, Noah Rabin, designated hitter tonight. Four, five, and six, Pasella, Kubo, and Nichols. Nick Strong, the catcher bat seventh. Luke Lawrence, the third baseman, will hit eighth. And JT Sokolov, the right fielder, will round out the order for 50-year head coach Steve Holm. As they get set to face, Brandon Bach. A true freshman left-handed pitcher from Plainfield North High School, Southwest Suburban Chicago, making his 11th start of the campaign. He's two and four, the 5.49 earned run average, 59 innings pitched this year, 69 hits, 37 runs, 36 of which have been earned. He's walked 23, struck out 40, and opponent sitting 296 against the 6'1", 165-pound freshman left-hander. Last start last Friday, a no decision against Belmont. He went three and a third, roughed up a little bit, eight hits, four runs, three of which were earned. He walked one. UIC went on to win that game 13 to eight, and he starts Shy Robinson off with the first pitch for a strike as the Birds find themselves in a 5 nothing hole. Robinson lines the ball down on the third base side, but well foul, and quickly, Bach ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. Two weeks ago, Bach, a season high, eight innings pinched against Bradley. Picked up the win, gave up just four hits, one run, did not walk a batter, and struck out five. That was a two-to-one UIC win. For the south ball, here's the one-two to Robinson upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. Robinson, 276, a home run, 10 RBIs. 417 on base percentage. 2 2 offering. That one's off the plate. And Robinson able to work the count full after falling behind 0 2. Robinson's really solidified the leadoff spot for the Redbirds after returning from a handmade bone injury. 3 2 lifted in the air. Foul territory on the third base side. Zaccone over in front of the UIC dugout has room. To put it away, and Robinson retired, and a pop up to the third baseman for the first out. Here in the home half of the first inning. Birds would love to at least get one back on the board to answer that five-run barrage by UIC in the top of the first inning. So here's Augie Rasmussen, a team high 316, nine home runs, 33 RBIs. Hits the ball on the ground, high hopper to second base. Nagelbach up with it and throws. And just barely gets Rasmussen in time. And Rasmussen first pitch swinging, grounds out to the second baseman, two up, two down. As you take a look at the UIC defense, Roberts, Hankel, and Peterson to the outfield. Zaccone, Zelinski, Nagelbach, and Nowick left to right in the infield. Bach on the mound, the lefty, and Cole Kahn doing the catching duties tonight for Sean McDermott. Noah Rabin steps in from the left-hand side, takes the first pitch fastball for a strike. Rabin, 289, home run to his credit. He's driven in 18. Box 01 upstairs. That'll leave in the count at 101. Good pitch by Bach, Rabin. Able to foul it off, and Bach once again ahead. One ball and two strikes. Robinson popped up to Zaccone, the third baseman in foul territory, then Rasmussen on the first pitch, grounded out to second. Rabin, the three-hitter, lifts the ball in the air to deep center field. Back on it is Hankel, looks up. It's going to short hop the wall in center field. Rabin rounds first and walks into second base with a stand-up double. 
And the Birds now with a runner in scoring position and two men out here in the bottom of the first inning. Eighth double of the year for Noah Rabin, the transfer out of Santa Rosa Community College in Northern California. That pitch on the outer half went with it to left center. So here's Daniel Pacella, the left fielder. Freshman, 308, a team high 13 home runs. He's driven in 46, first pitch swinging, fouled straight back. Pacella, one of five lefties in the lineup today for the Redbirds, facing left-hander Bach. Bach with the high set. Breaking ball, backed up on him, stayed elevated, and the count evens up at a one and one. Pacella comes into play today, fifth in the valley, and runs driven in. And sixth on the circuit with those 13 home runs. Rabin takes his lead off of second base. Pitch lifted foul, back and out of play behind the UIC dugout on the third base side. So Bach ahead in the count, one ball and two strikes to Daniel Pacella. Bach comes set, a glance to Rabin, the one-two pitch, hit on the ground, foul up the first base side. Shaden Kubo, the first baseman, waits on deck if Pacella can keep this inning alive. UYC scoring five times the big blow, a grand slam off the bat of second baseman Ryan Nagelbach. One-two off-speed pitch lifted in the air to shallow center field. Hankel has room, and he'll put it away for the final out in the home half of the first inning. No runs. The Birds get a hit. No airs. They left a man. We played one complete here in normal. 5-0 UIC. Missouri Valley Conference Track and Field Championships taking place on the Illinois State University campus along with graduation and commencement weekend here in Normal on a beautiful Friday night here at Duffy Bass Field as the Birds open a three-game homestand, their final homestand of the campaign against the UIC Flames. On an absolutely beautiful night for baseball. The rain subsided earlier in the day. Still a chance the rest of the weekend, but great night for baseball here on a Friday night as the birds go to the bullpen. So Cameron Maybe's night is done. He throws one inning tonight, and they're going to go with Thomas Harper, the 6'4 right-handed pitcher out of Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. He's going to come on in relief going to be the 12th appearance of the year for Harper and his fifth relief appearance. He's 2-3 and three with a 7.5 earned run average, 30 innings pitched. He's given up 31 hits, 25 runs, all of which have been earned. He's walked 21, struck out 30, and opponents hitting 270 against the 6'4", 205-pound right-hander from Wauwatosa East High School. Harper is the, the typical midweek starter for the Redbirds, but Illinois State did not play a midweek game this week, so he is fully rested. He's going to face two, three, and four for UIC here in the top of the second inning. Charlie Zaccone, 
leads things off. He was hit by a pitch on an 0-2 offering from Cameron. Maybe his first time up last inning. Hits that ball on the ground, but just foul on the first base side. So quickly, Harper comes in, jumps ahead. No balls and two strikes to Zaccone. Graduate transfer, a Wisconsin Stout prepped at Shepherd High School. South Suburban Palo Sites. It's a one-hopper to Kubo, but it gets by the first baseman into right field. Zaccone thought about taking a hard turn at first, but wisely retreats back to first base. Tough play for Kubo, tied him up as he came over toward the line behind the bag. And UIC for the second straight inning has their leadoff man on. It'll go down as an E3 officially. And Harper now will work out of the stretch as he faces Wraith Peterson, the right fielder. 0 for 1 as he stands in. Strikeout victim on a slider of Cameron Maybe's last inning. First pitch swung through a slider from Harper, but it got by Strong and allowed Zaccone to move up 90 feet to second base. So Zaccone now at second base, nobody out. Peterson. No balls at one strike to count. Harper set, slider again, caught the outside corner, and quickly Harper heading the count, no balls and two strikes. Five pitches and five strikes for Harper, but not much to show for it at this point. Check Zaccone at second base. Here's the 0-2 offering and a strike three. Got Peterson to chase another breaking ball out of the zone. And Harper records his first strikeout. And with one out, that'll bring up the center fielder, A.J. Hankel. 42nd meeting all time. Of course, UIC now in their first season as members of the Missouri Valley Conference after long history in both the Mid-Continent Conference as well as the Horizon League. First pitch offering from Harper right down Broadway. You tell Harper, who has been as high as 95 to 96, maybe even touching 97 this year, has pretty good velocity coming out of the pen tonight. 0-1 offering taken downstairs. That'll leave in the count at 1-1. Hankel walk came around to score in the Grand Slam home run by Nagelbach. Last inning. It's UIC. Took a 5-0 lead with that five-run top of the first inning. Off-speed pitch. Stayed upstairs on Harper. Two balls and a strike. Ankle spent two years at McHenry Community College. Prior to his injury played last year, it allowed him only one game at a pitch-in appearance before missing the rest of the year with those ligaments in his hand. But a 471 hitter. At McHenry Community College with five home runs. And he draws a one-out walk. So UIC now with runners at first and second. Third walk issued by ISU pitching so far as Carson Roberts digs in. Harper the high set, first pitch, slider, past the diving Kubo into right field. It's going to go into the corner, trying down by Sokolov. Around third and scoring, Zaccone, and coming all the way in to score as well is Hankel, and a two-run double off the bat of Carson Roberts that just hugged that right field first base line. And UIC adds on. They extend their lead to seven. They lead it 7-0 with one out here in the top of the second. Yeah, that ball lays just inside the first base bag. Goes all the way into the right field corner. Allowing Hinkle to, to score from first base.
So Roberts now at second base, one out. Here's Brett Nowick. He walked and scored his last time. Product of Lake Forest High School and a freshman All-American for UIC last year off speed pitch taken for a strike and quickly Harper had an account, no balls and two strikes. So Roberts now with three RBIs of the night. Fastball just off the plate. Good 0-2 pitch out of the right hand of Harper. One ball and two strikes. Ryan Nagelbach, the second baseman, who at the Grand Slam last inning waits on deck. One and two. On the way to Nowick. Slider got Nowick to chase and struck him out. Good breaking ball by Thomas Harper, his second punch out of the inning. And there's two men gone for Ryan Nagelbach. Switch hitting second baseman. Club to sixth home run of the year last inning. Now 20 runs driven in. Carson Roberts, two run double, stands at second base. The first pitch offering to Nagelbach. Take it downstairs for ball one. Harper on in relief. Cameron may be the starter for the Birds. Went just one inning, gave up five runs, all of which were earned. Fastball fouled back and out of play on the left side. Maybe gave up four hits. Walked two, struck out one, and hit a man. Here's a 1-1 from Harper upstairs. Two balls and a strike. They play Nagelbach to pull. Rasmussen swung over and right center field. Ball hit on the ground behind the bag. Kubo with the stop, and he's going to win the race to the bag to retire UIC here in the top of the second inning. But not before the Flames tack on two more on one big hit. And one man left on. We played one and a half in normal, 7-0 UIC. The UIC Flames have jumped off to the early lead here in the first of a three-game set at Duffy Bass Field. Flames scoring seven times on the first two frames. They lead it 7-0. And this is the UIC ball club we talked about in the open. Scott Red Hot, winners of four straight, coming off a sweep of Belmont last weekend and then picked up a big midweek win over the Big Ten on a Wednesday and a 7-3 win over Purdue. First pitch swinging, Shaden Kubo hits the ball right in the screws, but did so right at the left fielder, Carson Roberts. One pitch and one out for freshman left-hander Brandon Bach. Yeah, UIC with the, the win against Purdue, moved to 5-1 and one against the, the Big Ten this year, in addition to completing the season sweep of the Boilermakers. Greg Nichols stands in. 
Bach quickly pours one over for a strike. Nichols, 266. Six home runs. He's driven in 24. Squares to bunt, puts the ball down, does so foul up the third base side. And Bach in command at 0 2. Flames using a, a shift on Nichols. Try to go with the, the shift beating bunt there, but not unable to keep it fair. Shortstop Zelensky in the first base side of second base. Nichols lifts the ball in the air. The shallow left field. Roberts is there, puts it away. And two men down of the Illinois State second inning. That's going to bring up the catcher, the seven hitter, Nick Strong. Strong at 264, two home runs, 12 RBIs. First pitch offering lifted in the air to shallow left field. It's going to be the shortstop Zelinski going out in short left to put it away. Bach needed, I believe, just four pitches in that bottom of the second inning to retire the birds in order. No runs, no hits, no airs, nobody left on base. We played two complete normal. 7-0 UIC. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend, haul, or tow. Just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Because this isn't just about our capability, it's about yours. Retirement? It's been great so far, if you couldn't already tell. The wealth management team at Heartland Bank looked at my current investments and recommended updates and strategy that better fit my life. Then they took time to learn about my future needs and created a plan to meet them. When it came time to sell my share of the business, they guided me through investing the assets and setting up a trust for the kids. Now thanks to hard work and the wealth advisors at Heartland Bank, my best days are ahead of me. If you're looking ahead to retirement, let us help you plan. Back here at Duffy Bass Field in normal 7-0. UIC Flames with the early lead as we head to the top of the third inning. Illinois State able to scratch out a win this past Sunday, their last time out. Salvage a game of the three-game sets against Evansville as they were able to shut down the Evansville offense on Saturday and Sunday. Unfortunately, lost a tight one on Saturday, but came back with a nice 7 2 win to close out the series last Sunday here in Normal. Yep. Seven strong innings out of Derek Salata in his first start in the, the Sunday role, and then a two inning save for Elijah Dale. Limited the Purple Aces to just two runs. So Thomas Harper around for his second inning of relief. Cameron Maybe, the Redbird starter. Lasted just one inning against UIC. Good slider and drew a check swing strike from Bobby Grimes. Grimes single. He was stranded at third his last time up in the first. Good fastball by Harper. Quickly, he's ahead in the count. No balls and two strikes. It'll be eight, nine, and one for UIC here on the top of the third inning. Grimes, Zelinski, and Cole Kahn, the catcher. Flames with five of the first, two of the second. Here's the 0-2 slider in the dirt, blocked by Strong, swing and a miss from Grimes, but Strong able to pick it up off the turf and throw to Kubo in time to record the strikeout, and that's strikeout number three by Thomas Harper since coming on last inning, and all three of which have been on outstanding sliders. Yeah, that slider's been really effective for Harper so far, make it look like a strike and have it disappear out, out of the zone. Here's Zane Zielinski. He singled off maybe back in the first inning. One for one of a day. Takes a breaking ball outside. Zielinski, the right-handed in shortstop. Fouls the fastball straight back to even the count at one and one.
deep in the box. Slider again. And unable to hold up once again, Zielinski. UIC really having a hard time picking up the tight spin on that slider, which has been outstanding for Harper. Tried to extend it even a little bit further, but no bite from Zielinski, and the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Plays Zielinski straight away. The shortstop, no home runs on the year. Here's the 2-2 two -two offering. Came inside with a slider. Tried to check his swing and pissed it foul off his hands. So the count remains two balls and two strikes. Zelensky able to, to get a bet on that one to stay alive. Possibly too close to take in that situation. Good pitch by Harper, but just off the plate, and the count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. One well, of the top offenses in the league was in here last weekend in Evansville. They were able to swing the bats on Friday with a big win, but Saturday and Sunday the Redbird pitching staff really shut down that offense. And made some strides, but maybe struggling his one inning of work in the Friday start here tonight as UIC able to score five times. So up to Hibbert and Salata again in games number two and three this weekend to put up quality starts. And Harper just missed again and issues a one-out walk to Zane Zelensky, the nine-hole hitter for the UIC Flames, who goes to first base. That'll bring up the leadoff man, Cole Kahn. One for two, a single back in the first and scored. Zelensky, 8 of 10 in stolen base attempts as Harper works out of the stretch. First pitch, inside corner, taken for a strike. Long hold by Harper here. Quick throw over and back safely is Zelensky. Slightly open stance for Kahn. Checks his swing at a breaking ball. Runner going, and Zelensky has his ninth stolen base of the year. Ran in a breaking ball count, got it, and able to get a great jump. Not much Nick Strong could do there. So Zelensky in scoring position with one out, and one and one the count on Kahn. Breaking ball lifted in the air. Shallow outfield. Robinson calls off Nichols on the second base on the first base side of second base in shallow right center field and catches the pop up for out number two. So Zelensky stays at second base. Still in scoring position for Charlie Zaccone. Hit by a pitch and scored his first time up. The last inning reached on an air by the first baseman Kubo and came around to score on that two-run double by Carson Roberts. So it was a Coney, his third at bat in as many innings here so far tonight. 7-0 UIC. Zelensky really trying to time up Harper on second base, see if he can steal third potentially. Spin turn, Robinson back to cover, but back in safely is Zielinski. You got to be really sure if you're going to think about swiping third base with two men out and one of the top RBI men in the league at the plate. Here's the 0-1, well outside. Evens account at 1-1. Especially with Zaccone being left-handed, a lot of strong, a clear throwing lane. Plays a corner to pull. He does so here and lifts a high fly ball to right. Sokolov's going to run out of real estate and watch it pound off 
the scoreboard here at Duffy Bass Field. Zaccone with his 15th home run of the campaign, a moonshot to right center field. And it's 9-0 UIC here with two outs at the top of the third inning. There wasn't much doubt about that one. Zaccone got all of that ball, 407 feet to right center field. A no-doubter, as all Sokolov could do is go back to the track and watch it. Fifteenth home run of the year. RBIs number 49 and 50 for Zaccone and UIC. Now a 9-0 lead. Wraith Peterson fouls the ball up the third base side. So the Flames, who came in sixth in the 10-team Valley with 47 home runs on the year, have popped two tonight. Grand slam by Nagelbach back at the first and a two-run shot by Zaccone here. Slider by Harper in the dirt. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Peterson 0 for 2 tonight. Strikeout victim of Cameron maybe back in the first. And Harper struck him out last inning. Peterson now ahead in the count. Two balls. And one strike. Fastball fouled at the plate, and that might have gotten a piece of Nick Strong. Home plate umpire Doug Thrasher going to give Strong a little bit of extra time here. Goes out and walks the ball to, to Harper. Let the catcher shake that one off a little bit. So UIC five of the first, two in the second, and two in so far here in the third. They lead it nine nothing. Two and two the count. Harper works out of the line. Pitch lifted in the air. Shallow right field. Sokolov over toward the line and foul territory has room and he's going to put it away for the final out here in the third inning. But not before UIC tacks on two more. A two run home run from Charlie Zaccone. We played two and a half here in normal. 9-0 UIC. The Illinois State Redbirds looking to rattle the bats here as we head to the home half of the third inning and the UIC Flames with a 9-0 lead on Steve Holmes' ball club. Hard to ask for a better start to the weekend for the, the Flames. Nine runs through three innings already into the Redbird bullpen. And Brandon Bach, the freshman left-hander for UIC, has needed just 21 pitches over the first two innings. Yielded just one hit. It'll be 8 9 and 1 for the Birds here in the third inning. And Bach quickly behind the count. Two balls and no strikes to Luke Lawrence, the third baseman. 284 home run, 13 RBIs. JT Sokolov, the right fielder, waits on deck. Here's the 2 0 offering. Hit on the ground. Back up the box. It'll be hit for Luke Lawrence. Let's go, JT. So Lawrence, who's been scuffling a bit of late. Reaches base, a solid base hit back up the middle. 
his first at bat of the evening. He stands at first base for JT Sokolov. Sokolov hit the, the big home run in Sunday's win for the Redbirds, breaking a 2-2 tie in the sixth inning. That one's cued to first base. Nowick throws the short. Zelinski and the relay to first base in time for a 3-6-3 double play. First pitch swinging Sokolov and just cued it toward first base. Good delivery by Nowak to the shortstop Zelinski. To get the lead man, Zelinski showing off a good arm. Sokolov made a close play at first base. The first base umpire, Brett Bogner, said the relay throw from Zelinski beat him. So the Birds with the leadoff man on. Now have that a race two out. Shy Robinson, the leadoff man. Lines a shot foul down the left field line. He's behind the count. No balls and two strikes. Brandon Bach has been efficient. Here's the 0-2 offering. Off speed lifted in the air to right field. Plenty of room for Peterson. He's going to put it away. And the Birds, after a leadoff hit, a race and a double play. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. We played three complete here in normal, 9-0 UIC. Good start for second-year head coach Sean McDermott in the UIC Flames here on this Friday night, the second-to-last weekend of the campaign. McDermott, longtime assistant coach for former Flame head coach Mike D. During their run through the Horizon League, now in their first year in the Valley, McDermott has taken over on the near west side of Chicago. Continues to do an outstanding job recruiting wise as his ball club digs in here in the top of the fourth inning at Duffy Bass Field, a 9 0 lead on the Illinois State Redbirds. John Fitzgerald's got beaten alongside with you tonight in game number one of this three game weekend set. Thomas Harper, inning number three in relief of starter Cameron Maybe, and he quickly falls behind the count, two balls and no strikes. Four, five, and six for UIC here in the flame fourth. Hankel, Roberts, and Nowick. Two-o pitch, good backhand by Lawrence, up with it, throws in time to Kubo. To retire the leadoff man, A.J. Hankel. Great job and great hands by Luke Lawrence on the hot corner. As UIC for the first time has their leadoff man out. Yeah, just a two hopper over the bag at third and a really tough hop for Lawrence, but able to pick it and make a strong throw to first. He had to negotiate the bag, the hop, and get rid of it in a hurry and did all three of them very well. Now cued in on the grass and a good throw over by Lawrence. First pitch swinging it was Carson Roberts and he retires him. So back to back round outs to Luke Lawrence at third base and Thomas Harper. Now will face Breck Nowick, the first baseman with two men gone. The 
Flames able to scratch five across the top of the first inning against Redbird starter Cameron Maybe. Harper came out of the second, yielded two. UIC got another two in the third, and here in the fourth inning, Harper jumps ahead. A break, Nowick going one with two men out. Nowick walked, scored in the grand slam by Nagelbach back in the first, and then struck out in a slider by Harper in the second. So for one with a run scored officially for Nowick. Nine home runs, 42 runs driven in, 335 a year ago. High hopper to Lawrence, and he's going to make all three outs this inning. UIC, three up, three down. They all retired on 5-3 ground outs. He played three and a half a normal, 9-0 UIC. We know car shoppers spend over 10 hours searching online before buying. That's a long time. With over 1,000 vehicles, our selection and prices make it easy for you. Shop with confidence. Shop Heller Ford in El Paso online at hellerstores.com. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend. Haul or tow. Just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built for tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Because this isn't just about our capability. It's about yours. At Heller Motors, we know car shoppers spend over 10 hours searching online before buying. That's a long time. With over 1,000 vehicles, our selection and prices make it easy for you. Shop with confidence. Shop Heller Motors and Pontiac online at hellerstores.com. 9-0 UIC, we head to the home half of inning number four here at Duffy Bass Field. And the UIC Flames enjoying the early lead on Steve Holm and the Redbirds. As you see Steve Holm, now with his fifth campaign here in Bloomington Normal. Former big leaguer. Inauspicious start for his ball club tonight. What's well, really a pivotal series for the Birds. With just six games remaining on the conference slate. It'll be Rasmussen, Rabin, and Pasella, two, three, and four for Illinois State. He's been able to scratch just two hits across over the first three innings. Here's the 0-2 to Rasmussen. Breaking ball, lined to the left field. A solid base hit for Rasmussen, his first of the night, third hit of the night for Illinois State. As Rasmussen able to get his hand, hands extended on a breaking ball in the outer half and took it the other way. Yeah, you yeah, see with a the, with the shift there, but able to line over Ciccone, who's playing in the hole. So second consecutive inning. Birds have had their leadoff man on. He was erased in Luke Lawrence last inning on a double play ball. Now Rabin, first pitch swinging, lifts it into shallow left field. Coming over, it's going to fall in front of Roberts toward the line. And the Birds have runners at first and second with nobody out. It's going to go down as a single for Rabin, who's now two for two after doubling back in the first. And the Birds with a runner in scoring position for the second time today. And they have runners at first and second with nobody out for the cleanup man, Daniel Pasella. Flew out to center field his first time up. Breaking ball from Bach, a cold strike on the inner half. Here's the 0-1 from Bach, breaking ball again, this time lined on the third base side. Pacell has moved up into to the, the cleanup spot in the order after starting the year down six or seven. Trying to protect the freshman a little bit, maybe get more yeah. fastballs, but he's proved his worth very quickly this season. Really cut down on the, the strikeouts throughout the year. 
swinging at better pitches, it, it seems like. Doing a much better job of using all fields, too. Yeah, definitely has some power to, to all fields, but left center. So he's fighting to stay alive. 0-2, breaking ball on the ground to short. Zelinski over to Nagelbach, and the relay to Nowak in time. 6-4-3, the double play. Second twin killing of the night for UIC. In the process, Rasmussen moves up to third base, but there's two men out as Rabin is retired 6-4. And the relay to Pacella. So that's going to bring up Shaden Kobo. 0 for 1, flew out to left field. Hit the ball on the nose his first time up on the first pitch. This time the first pitch and off speed on the inner half for strike one. High set by Bach, off speed, lifted in the air to right field. Peterson has a beat on it, and he's going to put it away for the final out. Birds get their first two on with nobody out, but a double play ball. And a fly out ends the inning for Illinois State here in the fourth inning. No runs, two hits, no errors, and a man left on base. We played four complete normal, 9-0 UIC. Six-four right-hander Thomas Harper on for his fourth inning of relief. Looking to keep the birds within striking distance. It's been all UIC so far as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Nine-nothing Flames taking a look at the Valley standings heading into play on this penultimate weekend of conference play. Indiana State's winners of seven straight. Stand atop the Valley Standings. Illinois State opening the weekend at 7-14. That's good for eighth place. That's the eighth and final playoff spot in the conference tournament as they have a one-game lead over Belmont and Bradley. As a matter of fact, a game and a half as Valparaiso pounded Belmont earlier today, 12-3. Bradley's going to be in action tonight over in the River City as they play host to Evansville. So every game down the stretch, the Birds not with a whole lot of margin for error over the final six games as they're holding on to that eighth and final playoff spot. Birds will be at Valparaiso, who has really turned it on the second half of this conference late. Seven, eight, and nine against Thomas Harper and Ryan Nagelbach. Ahead in the count, three balls and no strikes. Nagelbach one for two. Drought it out to Shaden Kubo in the second, but did some damage in the first. A grand slam. His sixth home run of the campaign. That kept a five-run first inning for UIC. They added two in the second, two in the third. And Harper able to retire them in order last inning. But Nagelbach able to coax. A leadoff walk to start the top of the fifth inning. And he stands at first base with nobody out. Quick inning for Harper in the fourth, but not the best start here in the fifth of the, the leadoff walk. Fifth walk issued by Illinois State pitching through just over four innings of play. 
Harper out of the set, ground ball, Robinson at short. He's going to take it to the bag himself. Relay is wide of the bag, goes off the dugout. And safe at first base is Bobby Grimes, but they do get the lead man in Ryan Nagelbach. He is retired, six unassisted on the front end of that double play try. And Grimes able to reach on the E6. Yeah, double play ball throw just tailed up the line. Kubo unable to, to handle it. Strong there with the backup, though, to, to limit Grimes from potentially reaching second base. So Zane Zielinski, the shortstop. One for one. Single in the first. Walked and stole a bag in the third, but was stranded both times. So with one man out, Grimes leads off of first base. Five of five in stolen bases this year. And Zelensky flares the ball foul down the first base side. So quickly, Harper ahead in the count. No balls and two strikes. So we said inning number four for Harper in relief. 56 pitches so far for the 6'4 right-handed freshman. High set here. Good slider. Looks like that first pitch was uh, ruled down by the umpire. So... One and one there, and then the, the swing strike there to make it one and two. Harper's really featured an outstanding slide piece so far tonight. Comes back with it on the inner half and able to punch out Zelinski. Zelinski caught looking on the slider. For the second out here in the fifth inning. Fourth strikeout. Three and two-thirds for Harper since coming on for Cameron Maybe That'll turn over the order for Cole Kahn, the catcher. One for three with a run score. And on the first pitch, that slider tried to go back foot on him and unfortunately hit the back foot. And Kahn's at first base. Second UIC flame that's been hit by a pitch tonight. So UIC now with runners at first and second base with two men out. And Charlie Zaccone, the third baseman, who had a prodigious two-run blast his last time up, a team-high 15th of the year. He scored all three times. He's come to the plate. One for two officially. He was hit by a pitch in the first. Just a, a mammoth home run in, in the third inning. Got all of it to, to right center off of the, the Illinois State scoreboard. Here's a 1-0 from Harper. Fastball line down the line, but foul on the first base side. That one might have uh, put a dent in the Paul DeYoung baseball hitting facility down there. Pretty good exit velo off that foul ball. Four-year All-American career at UW-Stout. Now a graduate student at UIC, slider in the dirt. Good block by Strong on the runners after a treat back to the bases they were occupying. Grimes stands at second base at first base is Cole Kahn. He was hit by a pitch moments ago, two men out. Nine love UIC here in the top of the fifth inning. Here's the 2-1 from Harper. Fastball on the ground. Kubo backpedaling on a bounce and beats Zaccone to the bag at first base for the final out of the UIC fifth inning. No runs, no hits. There was an error, two men left on base. Played four and a half here a normal, nine nothing UIC.
Duffy Bass Field on commencement weekend here in the Illinois State University campus and the visitors from the near west side of Chicago. Struck early and often in this opener of the three-game set. The UIC Flames lead Illinois State 9-0. Take a look at some of the other action in the Valley tonight. SIU and Missouri State taking place in Springfield tonight. Scoreless in the top of the second. Murray State with the 3-1 lead on first place. Indiana State top of the third inning in that one down to Murray, Kentucky. And earlier today, Valparaiso put a hurt on Belmont. 12-3 the final up in northwest Indiana. The Birds will be at Valpo to close out the regular season next weekend. Birds with work to do here in the first of a three-game set. It'll be Nichols, Strong, and Lawrence. Face Brandon Bach. Nichols fouls the ball off at the plate. And Brandon Bach has been efficient, and he's been outstanding. Fifth inning of work. He's given up four hits, no runs, and he's thrown just 38 pitches to do so. Coaxed a couple of double plays. Yet to record a strikeout, but Birds have not been able to square him up. Yeah, Rabin, the double left center in the first inning. Kubo, line drive to left field. That's that's really about it. That ball lifted in the air just behind the infield edge, and Zaccone's going to put it away. So the leadoff man gone for Illinois State here in the home half of the fifth inning as Nichols pops to short. That's going to bring up the catcher, Nick Strong. He popped to short his first time up in the second inning. Strong, the sophomore catcher, transfer out of Delta Community College, San Joaquin Delta, Stockton, California. Six home runs, 27 runs driven in in 43 games last year. One of the top teams in Northern California at the junior college level. 0-1 pitch, fouled straight back. And quickly, Bach ahead of the count. No balls and two strikes. Strong one of seven California players for Illinois State. 0-2 oh, pitch taken upstairs. Bach tried to get Strong to chase on 0-2, but nothing doing. Here's the 1-2 offering in on the hands and fouled up the third base side foul. Luke Lawrence, who has one of the birds, four hits, waits on deck. Bach into the wind. Here's the one two off speed pitch called strike three. A strong swung on and missed, and Bach records his first strikeout of the night. Yeah, that pitch was up in the zone, but Strong couldn't quite stay back long enough. Pulled the string enough, and Strong well out in front. So two men down for Luke Lawrence, and Bach dots a fastball in the outer half for strike one. Lawrence led off the third inning with a single right back up the box. He was erased. Front end of a double play ball off the bat of Sokolov. Back in that third inning. He's behind 0-2. Breaking ball in the outer half just off the plate. One ball and two strikes. Pitch lifted foul on the third base side. Box one, two, lifted in the air, deep right field. Back is Peterson at the track, looks up and makes the catch just shy of the wall. And right center field here at Duffy Bass. So Lawrence gives it a ride, but the birds go in order. We played five complete to normal, 9-0 UIC.
Kepler Ford, we know car shoppers spend over 10 hours searching online before buying. That's a long time. With over 1,000 vehicles, our selection and prices make it easy for you. Shop with confidence. Shop Heller Ford in El Paso online at hellerstores.com. In a community where friendships form our foundations, Carl McLean County Orthopedics continues to be the region's most trusted orthopedic care provider. Now with an expanded healthcare network and the ability to accept most insurance, we continue to care for our own with excellence right here in our hometown. From prompt diagnosis and local surgical intervention to complete therapy and successful recovery, Carl McLean County Orthopedics can help you get back to the life you love. Visit CarlMcLeanCountyOrthopedics.com today. At Heller Motors, we know car shoppers spend over 10 hours searching online before buying. That's a long time. With over 1,000 vehicles, our selection and prices make it easy for you. Shop with confidence. Shop Heller Motors and Pontiac online at hellerstores.com. Duffy Bass Field here on a Friday night in central Illinois as we take a look at the potential setup for the Missouri Valley Conference Double Elimination Tournament coming up in a couple of weeks. And as of right now, Illinois State, the number eight seed for the eighth and final spot, they would face off against first place Indiana State in the opening round. It's going to be an interesting battle for six, seven, as UIC and Valparaiso are both playing good baseball down the stretch. And outside of Indiana State, it's it's really been a dogfight throughout the conference. Ton of parity in the Valley. As, as of right now, Belmont and Bradley are both out of the money, but things can change quickly with two weekends still left in conference play. Birds going to the bullpen again. This time it's going to be Jared Hart, the six-foot left-handed senior. Of a Cedar Park, Texas, originally transfer out of Wabash Valley Community College. Hard on for the ninth time this year. He's 1 0 with a 9.24 earned run average. Does have two saves to his credit. 12 and two thirds innings pitched. He's given up 20 hits, 14 runs, 13 of which have been earned. He's walked seven, struck out 16. An opponent sitting 357 against the Southpaw. Hart making his first appearance since April 1st against Missouri State in which he exited with an apparent injury. He'll face three, four, and five for UIC. Peterson on the ground to third. Lawrence up with it on the run, makes the throw in time to Kubo. Another nice play by Lawrence in the hot corner. And Peterson retired 5-3 to lead off the seventh inning. That'll bring up A.J. Hankel. 0 for 1 officially, but he's walked twice and scored a pair of runs. Hart working out of the stretch, and a first pitch fouled at the plate. Off the bat of Hankel. So that closes the book on Harper. He goes four innings in relief of Cameron Maybe gives up just two hits, four runs, three of which were earned. Walk three and struck out four. Pitch just caught the uh, inside corner there. Make it one and two. Ankle the center fielder, waits the one-two from Hart, lifted foul back and out of play over the seats on the first base side. Ankle a red shirt sophomore officially, originally at a Huntley, Illinois. One-two downstairs, evens the count of two balls and two strikes as Carson Roberts waits on deck. All right, gave a little extra on that fastball up to, to 91. 2-2 two, two fouled off the UIC facing dugout to third base. So Hankel stays alive at two balls and two strikes.
Did he check his swing? He did so, and the count goes full, three and two. Here's the full count offering from Hart. It's upstairs for ball four. Sixth walk issued by Illinois State here tonight in the opener of this three-game set. So Hankel walks for the third time tonight. He goes to first base with one out for Carson Roberts. Roberts one for three with three RBIs. And a two-run double back in the second inning. And that ball hit him. Third batter hit by Redbird pitching tonight. So Hankel moves up to second base. Roberts to first on the hit by pitch. And Breck Nowak, the batter now. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Into the fourth. And a ground out to Luke Lawrence at third base. Right-hander digs in. Hart comes set at the belt. Here's the first pitch offering. Take it inside. Blocked away by Strong. And the runner's unable to move up. Hart trying to... Trying to control that slider. Hit by pitch to Roberts was a slider, and then there another one down and in. Good long look at second base by Hart. High leg kick and a pitch on the inner half for strike one. Same two teams tomorrow, 1 o'clock the start time here at Duffy Bass Field. That ball missed downstairs, two balls and a strike. Game was originally scheduled for 3 o'clock, but pushed up with just everything going on on campus. NBC track conference championships, commencement. Spin turn by Hart but no throw is needed as scampering back in safely as Hankel at second base. So the Birds will finish at Valpo next weekend. EYC will be at home. They'll play host to the Purple Aces of Evansville and three straight at Granderson Stadium over the weekend to close out the regular season slate. EYC came into this one, winners of four straight. They'll be at Iowa on Tuesday night before... Opening up that series with Evansville Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Ball lifted in the center field. I'm sorry, at second base where Nichols is there to put it away. So two men out for Ryan Nagelbach. Switch hitting second baseman. Steps in one for two officially. A walk and a grand slam back in the fourth inning. Back in the first inning. Part of a five-run first for UIC. Checks his swing and fouls it off behind the UIC dugout. Hart jumps ahead 0-1-1. Here's the 0-1 offering. Take it off the plates. One ball and a strike. Hankel walked. He's at second base. Roberts hit by a pitch. He stands at first with two men out. Playing Nagelbach to pull just slightly. Shifted over toward right center field. And Nagelbach ahead in the count. Two balls and a strike. Hart really trying to, to work the outside corner here. First three pitches to Nagelbach. All sliders on the outside part of the plate. 
Here's the 2-1 line to base it back up the box. Rounding third is Hinkle. He's going to come in to score. Chugging for third base. And in safely is Carson Roberts. And UIC now with runners at the corners and two man outs after the RBI single off the bat of Ryan Nagelbach. So UIC now a 10-0 lead. They were held scoreless in the fourth and the fifth, but back on the board here on the top of the sixth inning. As Bobby Grimes, the designated hitter, the eight man, in Sean McDermott's order, steps in. Roberts at third base. Nagelbach at first. Arkham set at the belt. The lift and the first pitch is fouled off toward the UIC dugout. Grimes one for three. So look at the Nagel back line drive through the middle. RBI. 17th, I'm sorry, 21st RBI for Nagelbach on the year as he has driven in five runs so far today. Grand slam of the first and an RBI single here in the seventh and the sixth. Here's the 1-1 one, one from Hart, take it outside. Two balls and a strike. Short stop, Zelinski waits on deck. UIC sending 10 men to the plate in that five run first. Good fastball there from Hart. Threw it by Grimes and elevated it. Two balls and two strikes. Two-two, off speed, lifted, down the line in foul territory, and that's going to get out of play. As Sokolov runs out of real estate on the right side. Twenty pitch inning for Jared Hart. Third Redbird arm used tonight. Here's the 2-2 on the way. Good fastball, strike three. Pump the fastball by Bobby Grimes, who strikes out for the second time tonight. And UIC is done here on the top of the sixth inning. Not before they get a run. On a hit. No errors and two men left on base. We played five and a half here in normal. 10-0 UIC. Freshman left-hander Brandon Bach. It's been outstanding for the UIC Flames tonight after being staked to an early five-run lead. He has done the rest, throwing up zeros against the Illinois State offense. And UIC now as we head to the home half of the sixth inning, a 10-0 lead. Bach so far just 53 pitches as he pitches here in the sixth inning. It's a UIC ball club who is dead last in earned run average, opponent batting average, number of strikeouts, and the number of home runs allowed coming into play today. 
Team ERA of 7.39, but Bach thrown shut out baseball so far. Birds look to get on the board with 9-1-2 as they hit here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Sokolov, Robinson, and Rasmussen to face Bach. Freshman left-hander out of Plainfield North High School. Good off-speed pitch hit on the ground. Hopper. Zaccone up with it. Throws in time just barely to get Sokolov, who was hustling down that first base line. And Bach once again retires the leadoff man for Illinois State. That's going to turn over the order to Shy Robinson. It's 0 for 2 on the night. Popped up to third base his first time up. And flew out to right back in the third to end the third inning. It's here with one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. 1-0 pitch. Lifted in the air, foul territory down the left field line. Zaccone reaching over, but too far out of the outstretched glove hand of Zaccone over by the fence. Zaccone was able to, to find the fence, but ball just a little bit too far for him. Gets out of play. One and one now, the count to Robinson. Off-speed breaking ball hit in the air, center field. Hankel has a beat on it, and he's going to run it down in front of the warning track in dead center field for out number two here in the Redbird sixth. That'll bring up the center fielder, Augie Rasmussen, the team's top hitter. One for two on the night. Grounded out the second base in the first and singled back in the fourth, but was stranded at third base. First pitch swinging, fouled back and on a play to the left. Rasmussen now on a 26 game on base streak, extended by the single to left field. Team high 316 coming into play today. Out in front of an off speed pitch and hooks it foul on the first base side. So Bach ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. 0-2 0-2 off speed, take it off the plate, ball one. Here's the one-two upstairs. That'll leave in the count of two balls and two strikes with two men out. Bach ranked the sixth best left-handed prep pitcher in the state of Illinois in that class of 2022 by perfect game a year ago. Asmussen. Spoils an elevated fastball. Foul to stay alive. Two balls and two strikes. 10-0 UIC. The Birds hit here in the home half of the sixth inning. Bach into the line. 2-2 fastball just off the plate. The count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Noah Rabin awaits on deck. If Rasmussen can keep the inning alive. Here's the 3-2. Fastball lifted in the air. Center field. Plenty of room for Hankel. Has a beat on it, puts it away, and the Birds are retired in order in the bottom of the sixth inning. We played six complete here in normal. 10-0 Flames. Back here at Duffy Bass Field, we head to top of inning number seven. The first of a three-game weekend set between the Birds and UIC. John Fitzgerald alongside Scott Beaton. 
10-0 UIC with the lead, and it began the fireworks in the top of the first inning as Ryan Nagelbach, a grand slam for the left-handed hitting second baseman. Off the starter, Cameron Maybe. A five-run top of the first inning for the visiting Flames, and they have not looked back since. Brendan Bach has been outstanding, throwing up goose eggs on the bump and has limited the birds to just four hits. Noah Rabin with one of them. As he short hopped the wall, left center field going the opposite way, but unfortunately the offense for the birds tonight has been few and far between a pair of home runs by UIC. Nagelbach working on a five RBI night. And an RBI single in the six as well as we take a look at Ryan Borberg. On for the 12th time this year for Illinois State. Borberg, the 6'2", 190-pound freshman out of Shawnee Mission Northwest High School. Just outside of Kansas City, he's 1-0, 11.44 earned run average. 20 Ks in 19 and two thirds. He's going to face 9 1 and 2 in the UIC order as the Flames bat here on the top of the seventh inning, leading 10 0. Zelensky, the leadoff man on a 1 0 pitch, fouls it down the right field line, but that's going to slice out of play. And even the count of one ball and one strike. Borberg threw four innings against Evansville on Friday. Looked really good in the first three and then kind of ran out of gas in the fourth one. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Zelinski. Take it upstairs. Two balls and a strike. Borberg, another one of those really electric freshman arms that Illinois State has been able to run out there this year. Here's the 2-1. Outer half evens the count of two balls and two strikes. Yeah, Borberg certainly seems to have a, a role with this team in coming years. Here's the 2-2, breaking ball. Backed up on him a little bit. That brings the count full, three balls and two strikes. 10-7-0 for UIC. 0-4-2 for the homestanding Redbirds. Here's the 3-2 from Borberg. Fastball fouled straight back into the screen. And Zelinski, the shortstop, stays alive. A 3-2 to lead off this top of the seventh inning. Here's the 3-2 breaking ball. Just lifted behind the bag at first base. Kubo on the edge of the outfield grass. Back pedaling and makes the play. Great job by Kubo. Showing some range. Just a little bit of a flare off the bat of Zelinski and a good breaking ball. Just lunged out. Tried to cue it into right field, but Kubo was there to put it away. Sometimes those balls are pretty tough to read, but Kubo looked like he got a good jump on it. Dropped a step to his right and able to make the catch. Top of the order now for the catcher, Cole Kahn. First pitch swinging, lifted in the air. Short right field. Robinson's going to come over and call off the second baseman, Nichols, and put it away as Cole Kahn is retired on a first pitch swinging pop-up to the shortstop. Two up, two down for UIC here on the top of the seventh inning. For Charlie Zaccone, all he's done today. Let's go one for three officially. Three runs scored. He's driven in two. He's clubbed his team high 15th home run of the year back in the third of two run shots. Now 50 runs driven in for the grad transfer out of UW Stout. And he hunts at a first pitch elevated fastball. Uh, unable to catch up with it out of the right hand of Borberg. A big swing there. Certainly looking to do some damage. Here's the 0-1 downstairs. One ball and one strike. Zaccone at 385 over his four-year career at Wisconsin Stout. Two-time all-WEAC performer. 
1-1, hit him again on the elbow pad. Second time he's been hit by a pitch tonight. So he stands at first base with two men out. Fourth flame. Been hit by a pitch tonight. UIC came in third in the Valley. They now have 55 times they've been hit by a pitch this year. So Zaccone leads off of first base. Fourth time he's been on the bases tonight for UIC. He leads it 10 nothing. Wraith Peterson, 0 for 4 night, pair of strikeouts. Hits with two outs. That ball hit on the ground. Lawrence backhands it. Long throw in time. Throws a strike over to Kubo to retire. Wraith Peterson and UIC is done in the top of the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no airs. There was a man left on base. We played six and a half. Seventh inning stretch time here in normal. 10-0 UIC. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend. Haul or tow. Just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford Tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Because this isn't just about our capability. It's about yours. What is a legacy? It's the difference you make measured by the lives you change. It's imagining new possibilities for our future and unlocking the mysteries of our past. It's learning and teaching. It's how life shapes you and how you shape life. A legacy is the mark you leave on the world. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Last chance opportunity for the Illinois State Redbirds as we head to the home half of the seventh inning and the Birds find themselves trailing UIC 10-0 here in the first of a three-game weekend set against the UIC Flames. The Birds are going to send three, four, and five to the box to face freshman left-hander Brandon Bach, who has thrown six shutout innings so far. Don't forget, down the stretch of Valley play over the next two weekends, stay in the loop on Twitter with that Redbird baseball. Rabin first pitch swinging. Zaccone comes over in foul territory as Rabin pops up to the third baseman to lead off the bottom of the seventh inning. Rabin now two for three, a double, a single, and that pop-up. That's going to bring up Daniel Pacella, who's going to hit with one out. Pacella looking for his first hit of the day. First pitch by Bach is taken out of the zone for ball one. Pacella flew out to center field uh, in the first inning. He routed into a 6-4-3 double play in the fourth. Fouls the pitch off there. Count even at one and one. UIC looking to go 10 and 12 in the Valley. El Paraiso has won already today, so they've improved to 9 and 13. UIC currently a one-game lead on Valpo for the sixth spot. Pacell lifts it to left field. And Roberts able to put it away for the second out here in the Redbirds' seventh inning. UIC also winners of six of their last seven in conference play. Looking to make it seven of eight. One four straight overall after that sweep of Belmont last weekend at home and then the win over Purdue midweek. Shaden Kubo flew out to left, flew out to right. He's 0 for 2 as he stands in. Missouri Valley Conference plays a 10-run rule after seven, so unless the birds can scratch across their first run of the night, this will be their last chance opportunity. Kubo had that count, two balls and no strike, swings on 2-0, lifts it in the air to right field. Peterson, the right fielder there, has room, puts it away, and the UIC Flames in convincing fashion. 
take game one of this three-game series, a 10-0 win over Illinois State. The Flames have now won five straight. They improved to 10-12 and in the Valley docket. The Birds fall to seven up and 15 down. They still hold the eighth and final spot in the Valley Tournament with five conference games left to play to this weekend and then to next weekend at Valparaiso where they will close out the regular season. It's now time for a play of the game brought to you by Carl Broman Medical Center. And we take a look at the bomb off the bat of Charlie Zaccone. Back in the third inning, a two-run shot for Zaccone, his team high 15th of the campaign. That was a no-doubter. Second round tripper of the night for UIC. Grand slam by Nagelbach. The second baseman back in the first inning got this show going for UIC as the Flames win this in convincing fashion. 10-0 our play of the game brought to you by Carl Broman Medical Center. Redefining health care around you. Visit carl.org to find the care you need. So a shutout victory for Brandon Bach on the mound as he limits the birds through seven innings as UIC wins it 10-0 here on this Friday night. That'll do it for our broadcast for my partner, Assistant Athletics Communication, Scott Beaton. This is John Fitzgerald. Birds fall tonight in the opener of this three-game set, 10-0 at the hands of UIC. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other productions, on our family of ESPN networks, log on to ESPN.com or download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.